uh, Judith from Golden Skate, and I'm here with Stefan Lambiel in his skating school in Switzerland, um, Jean Ferry. And uh, Stefan, thanks for taking time. Um, you have had a very successful season behind you, and uh, you're currently preparing your skaters for the next season. Reflecting on the last Olympic season, what were the standout moments for you? Well, I have to say I have had a beautiful eight years of coaching here in Champéry. And uh, yes, uh, there were many successes last season, but I, I, for me, at any levels, any moments with my students, they are like great memories and uh, uh, working here and then going to competitions and uh, getting success either with, with the great performance or with great result is um is beautiful and i look forward to bringing more and more uh, material for my students um what i wish for them is really like my my end goal for all my students is that one day they become uh, autonomous Let's, uh, then just just ta start talking about your top three international students mm -hmm. shoma uno dennis vasilias and kashiro shimada we start with shoma um, how would you describe his development since you started working with him in fall 2019? Um, I, I think Shoma has become more and more uh, independent and he has been able to develop more and more his own personality. He knows what he likes, what he wants, what he needs. He's much more um, conscious about himself and that helps him of course, in his technique, but it helps him also to perform. Um, he has developed his own opinion uh, throughout these two years together, and um, or three years together. I don't. I, I have three a very, years. It's three years. It's three years. It's three I have years. a very big problem with numbers <laughs> so, and time. COVID times have have been so disturbing with with time. Um, but yeah, he, he has developed, I think, his, uh, his personality, yes. So how, um, uh, you, can you describe the night where Shoma became world champion from your perspective, maybe, the night that made you a world champion coach? Um, I just remember seeing his face during his free program being so free, and that was for me such a joy to watch. Um, he's a very emotional skater and uh, his movement and his body language is very clear and that's probably why we understand each other so yeah. well um, because he's able to speak without speaking kind of and, uh, and what, when I was watching him skate I could feel his happiness and I could feel his freedom and his joy to share that, that program and that performance so um, for me, that was the highlight of the world. This was really those four minutes of uh, the free skate. Right. So while you skated. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, you told in the press conference at the World Championships, Shoma, we are going to step up. How exactly do you think can he still step up? I mean, in life, I think uh, we, are, we have so many opportunities on our road to step up and to improve. And uh, that's what I meant. I mean, uh, he has many opportunities in front of him. And um, yeah, facing one obstacle at a time is, uh, is a way to improve, to get better, to grow. And uh, uh, I wish him to really get going and keep dreaming. And even, I, I think when a season is over, there is a new season coming and that gives you... Uh, a new uh, thing to look up for, and um, and he's right right there and right now at the moment. Um, why and how did you choose his new uh, two programs? I think you chose the music for both of them and ca yes. choreographed uh, the short. Right. Um, it's uh, Gravity by John Mayer and uh, Air uh, by uh, Jan Sebastian Bach in the original. Um, yeah, how did you choose it? We we actually I was uh, in April I was. Uh, thinking about the short program and I had two songs to choose from and Salome and I, we were listening to those two songs and I, I was swinging, swinging back and forth mm -hmm. 
one to the other. Yeah. And uh, and with Salome, we thought, okay, this this gravity is probably a good choice. And in the morning, we put the music on, and I started working with him. And as soon as we started, we looked after the session. We looked at each other with Salome, and we were just like, this is this is correct. Like this feels like this is it. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, Shoma was so i don't know it felt so Natural. organic yeah. it felt really yeah. really organic and uh what i was showing him he he was comfortable doing it and i always tell my student if it's uncomfortable mm -hmm. it's wrong mm -hmm. like i really love to see it doesn't mean that if it's comfortable it's yeah. correct but uh, but yeah it really looked like what he was doing was was him it was his style and the free we had the idea to do air uh, for a long time and i was looking for uh, the second part um, uh, to match with the bach uh, music and uh, i really love this uh, jakub um, yeah the singer jakub, jakub orlinski singer and he's uh, very powerful in his voice and has this very high notes and I think it matches also with Shoma's uh, skating. So last question about Shoma. You're going to perform together with him at the show uh, Friends on Ice. What can we expect there? Um, yes, uh, we are going to skate at the same show. Right now we are discussing with uh, the organizers about what we will do. Not sure it's going to be with Shoma because there is also Satoko in the show and there yes. is also Shizuka in the show yeah. and Shoma, of course, and Daisuke. Yeah. So I would oh, love to skate options. with all of, all of them. Yeah. So, um, so it will be a surprise and I look okay. forward to, to develop that. Perfect. <laughs> uh, we are all uh, really looking forward. <laughs> so let's go on to Dennis. And yeah. I think he had the best season of his career last year as mm -hmm. well. Um, you were working with him to, since 2016. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's a big question, but how would you describe his development in this time? He really grew up, right? Yes, I think he has mastered uh, a lot of things uh, the last six years. Um, he has grown up. Um, I think he he knows. Of course, he's still very young. He's 22 years old. And uh, he, at this age, you're an adult, but you're still thinking of your way. and you're Trying still... to find yourself. Exactly. Yes. So I... I I feel he has matured a lot and he's a very strong man with a lot of ambition and a lot of determination and he's so conscious and so uh, meticulous on how to do things and I love that about him. I need to still help him and guide him to, yes, to, to know the way. Yeah. Uh, because sometimes, of course, with all this perfection, uh, perfectionism, <laughs> per perfectionism comes a lot of doubts also. Mm -hmm. So, so at times uh, I need to be there to to show him the light or to kind of give him uh, some some um, guidelines. Mm -hmm. But his power and his um, engine is on a way and is moving very fast and I'm just guiding him with that speed that he has. <laughs> After the European Championships that were really emotional and really great for your entire team, um, you said you knew he always had it within, within him. Mm -hmm. It was an amazing moment for um, both of you and all of you. Um, what do you think, why, what was the key to the success? Um, <clears throat> I think it was really, um, I don't know how to say, like, yeah. I, I believed in him since day one and he has worked very hard yeah. and probably Just even before work. we started working together, he's a very hard worker and, and I believe in work. This is, I believe, yeah. I believe in him and I believe in work and, yeah. um, I think with hard work you need also opportunities on your road and you need to be open-minded to catch those opportunities you can have a plan you can have 
goals and you can work very hard with your goals. If your eyes are not open, you will miss a lot of opportunities. And I think what I liked about his week in Tallinn was that he was ready, strong, but he was open-minded and he was free of pressure or um, achieving any goals. He was just there to skate and to give and to push and to, and that's what I, I enjoyed every single day in Tallinn, watching him practice and seeing him with th this energy that had such a good flow. And um, so, yeah, on the road, there are, there are opportunities. And when you're open, when, when you're, senses are feeling that and you're not holding back and sticking to the plan but grabbing the opportunity and moving on that's when it it works yeah it was it, amazing it, it, it's it's hard to explain because yeah. sometimes you're so ready and, and it, it doesn't happen sometimes you're not ready and it happens but i think it's it's really about grabbing yeah maybe like really let loose the, the thing that he exactly. didn't care too much about the result. Exactly. And, yeah. and that was so Just beautiful. I saw him in practice the, during the whole week and he was not, he was not influenced by, by others or by nothing really disturbed him. He was just there and yeah. he was comfortable with himself. Right. Let's uh, go on a little bit to Koshiro. Mm -hmm. Um, he also, I think, has a special place in your heart. By now, you work with him for five years, and uh, he has it really hard in the field, the tough field of the Japanese uh, man. What are you working on with him, and how do you see his prospects in this field? I mean, he has also developed so much since the first time we worked together. Um, the first time we worked together was in Nobeyama when he was still a novice skater. And yeah. a few years later, I mean, he skated in Ice Legends. A few years later, I choreographed his short program when he was junior still. And from that moment, he started, started working with me um, as, uh, as my student. And um, I remember that young kid. Um, yeah, and now it's a grown up man. And now <laughs> he's a man. And, and really that transformation, because we work all the time together, I don't realize when this change happened. But mm -hmm. if I remember Koshiro yeah, five years back. ago, and now I'm just like, how did that little boy became such a handsome man with uh, with so much uh, like I don't know. He's he's uh, gentle. He's very determined. Very smart. And, he has um, just a very good heart, I think. Very good well. heart, and um, and yeah, and also hard worker, respectful, um, and I love to see that that now he's even free of of I don't know how to say. Like it used to be because the probably the field in men's uh, uh, men's competition in Japan is very tough the pressure inside the the national team is pretty high pretty strong definitely and um while he while he's practicing i, I feel like he's kind of uh making his way and not yeah not overthinking that but really going and working for himself of course the end goal is to be the number one and to be the best but uh, I think what makes him special is that he has found him himself. He have he has found his uh, his own power. Yeah. All right, uh, Koshiro told on his uh, social media that he was extremely inspired by your performance during okay. Fantasy on Ice. Okay, um, and he told me yesterday. He was proud when he saw your performances that you are his coach. Okay. Um, you're, of course, not also an inspiration for him, but for many others. But uh, what does it mean to you? Well, I, I have to say when he came to watch the show, I was really uh, inspired to skate well. And I was so happy that, of course, there were many yeah. people in the audience and, and I'm, I'm skating for 
every yeah. single person in the building, but to know that he was there and to perform with him, to perform for yes. him was something very special. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have much time to get ready, but I really wanted to skate well. Uh, so, um, and I'm, I'm glad he enjoyed and got inspired by the show. Um, I love to, when I see them practice, I'm also very inspired and I want to, I want to be young again, uh, younger. And, yes. um, I, I feel, of course, I'm, I, I'm their coach and, um, I need to guide them and give them, um, the instructions to move on. But I also like to, to support them and to, to listen to their needs. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to react quickly uh, when they need to, to have my help and my support. Um, so let's talk then a little bit about your two programs that you yes. performed in Fantasy and Ice. Both are really sad and emotional, um, especially this, this bitter earth. Um, how did you choose them? It feels like it's so far from what I'm living right now in the yeah. camp. Um, it was really like a different time, a different yeah. um, atmosphere. But um, I, I'm. I, it's so far from yeah. <laughs> from what I'm living right now. I mean, the, the, you need to know that coaching and performing they are so far from each other like yeah. when i'm coaching i have not i i i don't know that i'm here like <laughs> it's hard to understand but um it's almost like using two different brains and uh, when i perform it's i don't remember that I'm a coach, kind of. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so then you're really the performer. Yourself. Yeah. So it's it's two it's, worlds. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really like two worlds. And um, mm. when I was performing in Japan, I I enjoyed it so much to to have this chance, this opportunity during the COVID uh, pandemic. I never thought, or I didn't expect, because it was so difficult to plan and difficult to imagine something coming up so i just forgot about about this whole world and then suddenly i was able to perform again and it was such a, a great experience i was so happy that i had this chance to do it again um and i i used the opportunity to a f like full potential and um those two programs are rather sad talking about uh being lost in one of them and in the other um, for this bitter earth. It's it's really that connection with, with this world that is a bit mad and crazy and, and sick. Uh, and nevertheless, we need to keep the hope and we need to keep um, looking forward and uh, moving on. And uh, um, bad things, they, they happened. They happen still and with hope and there is a big a big message of continuity in the sense that even nature nature is so big yeah it's bigger than anything and it's beautiful and i'm surrounded by this this beauty around us and um but sometimes it it takes your life away it takes your 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 precious things away um it still continues and uh we need to yeah to accept that and we need to i don't know i i, I felt pretty connected with that song every time i uh, the music started um i was inspired i was happy to just be and uh and perform so during that this bitter earth there's a moment when you fall on purpose mm -hmm. um i was asking myself how do you manage to do this it mm -hmm. looks very dramatic and painful mm -hmm. and um 
there are yeah. a few things that are um, that are specific to that piece. Um, you mentioned the fall. Uh, the fall is really about in in our world we have gravity and gravity brings us down. But this this gravity sometimes we try to because we are afraid of going down. Sometimes we don't allow ourselves to to go down. But sometimes we need to go down to get up again. And this is that sensation of like collapsing and after that collapse you build up again and there there is like really it's that sensation of hope you know it's it's broken it's hard to get up it's hard to move on it's hard to to still believe but that little hope grows 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 and and life comes back and and the other point that uh is very special to that piece is i was I like improv, but I have learned to practice so hard that I felt not comfortable anymore improvisate, improvising. Yeah. Because when you are a perfectionist, you tend to try to go to the schedule and to the to the point. And then Hudia, the choreographer who I worked with for that number, she wanted to challenge me in putting improvisation in that piece. And it felt really uncomfortable for me to know that I will go on the ice, not knowing exactly what I will have to do. So it, it was quite um, disturbing. But at the same time, I liked the challenge. I wanted to push myself towards that. And she gave me some techniques and some exercise to allow myself to feel confident about improvising. And we worked on having one intention, one um, one kind of um direction and to just trust mm -hmm. that direction that my body will be smart enough to to experience that and uh and that's what i basically did when there are a few parts in that program where where i improvise um and they are connected with each other those three parts um so once i i'm behind the curtain and sometimes I, I was behind the curtain I, and I was still asking myself, what is my intention? What is my, my, um, my action, my, my thought? And I was kind of empty of thoughts and something came up to my mind and that was what, what happened. And, uh, and it was quite, quite a beautiful experience to, to live that. Now it makes sense why the program changed every time. Yes, exactly. So every time was different with a different intention. And uh, I, I enjoyed that challenge very much. Yes. Um, you were uh, not only an outstanding artist, but also an athlete still. And you showed that you can still manage to jump the quad. Can you, how do you practice it and how, how do you manage this? I practice it by teaching it. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, when you teach, you need to kind of, your brain needs to um, slow down a little bit the movement and try to understand what's happening on each step of the movement and the motion. So I think it really helps me to see all the skaters and all the students do their thing and then slowly um, slowly you put things together for each skater with different focus some skaters they really want to turn some skaters they cannot really push so you need to kind of fix things and then you see so many examples so it helps you a lot to, to kind of put the things together of course you need to physically still be able so I'm, I'm working on my my body to keep my joints healthy and my muscles activated but uh but yeah the mind work is is big when you coach it's really impressive <laughs> so unfortunately it seems like our time is up yes. thank you so thank so you. thank so you much. and i'm very sorry yeah.